Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial on UMEP. UMEP is the Urban Multiscale Environmental Predictor, which is a climate service tool available online and it's open source and it's working in QGIS. Um, this is going to be the third video of the series of videos on UMEP. Today we will focus on a particular preprocessor, which are the special data. So I'm going to teach you how to generate your own spatial data. Um, basically, we need DEMs, which are digital elevation models, um, re representing um, the elevation of the ground, which is a raster. Then we are going to use, um, we're going to generate a DSM, which is the uh, digital surface model um, that includes ground and building footprints. And then, um, then we're going to do the canopy DSM, which is the information of the tree height. Now, um, there are a lot of information already available in UMAP. Um, you, you may find um, very useful to download the, the data sets that are provided there, but many of people will, will think, okay, now I want to do, I want to run Solvig or any other urban um, heat island analysis or any sort of tool of processor in, in UMAP. And for that, any sort of processors in UMAP need um, need special data. So if we go to the QGIS, QGIS and UMAP, the, the processors, the Solvig, I already explained before, um, then the urban energy balance or solar radiation and urban heat island uh, processors, all of them need special data. When the special data is not provided, then you have to generate it. And this tutorial is about how to generate those critical special data sets. In, a, in the following video, I will teach you how to generate your meteorological data. Okay, and then we will run um, with that data um, out of thermal comfort analysis. Okay, so um, to start, um, the, the, the initial point is to identify or find the data that you need for your study. So um, here in Australia, we use Elvis Geoscience, um, which is um, a portal um, available with free open source um, LIDAR and elevation information, okay, uh, for the entire Australia, also bathymetry. Um, here I'm right now in the capital of the, of the country in Canberra. Um, um, I selected this area, which is a very interesting urban development that um, is having, it's increasing and it's growing these days, which is the East Lakes, it's in the Kingston suburb. Um, it's near the Burley, uh, uh, Lake Burley Griffin. So it's on the east side. So um, I just selected a polygon and I identified the data. So in this case, I'm downloading the digital elevation model of one meter and also the point clouds in very high resolution. So you can find any other data in any other portals, like for example, opentopography.org. Uh, um, there are a lot of tools there um, and other, other, other data sets available worldwide. Um, um, DEMs from the USGS, um, United States uh, portal, um, so on. I mean, each country has their own source for data sets so you can find them easily um, recommend you using the if you can get the dm will save a lot of time if not i will show you today two methods one is using the uh, deriving everything from lidar and the other is using the existing dm and that you you may find in a, in the data portal or download or generated even from lidar so um, the first step is once you download or you have the data, it's open the data in Cloud Compare. So we're going to use here two software, which is one Cloud Compare, which is open source and also QGIS. So here you have the whole tile that I downloaded. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of, it's good to inspect and check the, the, the points. These are already classified. If you don't have them classified, it's really good that you can try to find uh, uh, data points or point clouds that are already classify for you, which is makes, uh, will save a lot of, save a lot of time. You can see here it is classified in different um, type of points. So buildings, trees, low grasses, water, ground. We want at this point just to focus on specific things, which are ground, trees, and buildings. So what we're going to do is a process of segmentation. I already explained in many other cloud compared uh, 
uh, tutorials available in YouTube in my in my YouTube channel. So I will I will be very quick on this. I'm not going to into details on how the segmentation works because you can watch those videos. So the first one is just identify the ground, and I am exporting those points. As you can see here, are all the ground points. So I will rename this as ground. Okay. Um, then we go back to our point cloud, the original point cloud. If the if the point cloud is too large, you may need to um, um, subsample it. Okay. Um, the next step is just to identify the next set of the other set of points that I want. I don't want bushes or trees or grasses. I want trees like these ones. So I will export that and I will call them trees. Um, and the say and the last one are the buildings. Okay, we go there, we select these, minimum, maximum, export, and here we have our buildings. Now what we could do is we can color them, um, tools. I have also tutorials on this, but this is a very fast coloring just to uh, be able to identify the points, the ground. Now our trees, we can color them green. And then our buildings, we can color them gray. So then where we have, um, now it's good to save them if you can save them. So um, in generated a special data set, we can put the ground dot LAS or loss uh, cloud. So we save them in, in case you, you need to get back to them in future and derive more information. We save the trees, same process, use the original resolution and the buildings okay are all safe now so what we can do now is to generate a dm from the point cloud now there are very interesting things happening here and you will see when i generate the ground using the rasterize um, there are also have other videos on this um, you need to select the step the step is the size of the grid okay so it will be basically the the pixel size in this case we want one meter remember that in in, in UMAP, all the DMs have to be, or, or a special data has to have the same number of columns and rows. It means the width and height, uh, width and length. And also they have to match in, in, in the, in especially, they cannot be one pixel bigger or smaller or shift. Um, and they have to be the same pixel size. So this is really important. Right now the size is 1000, 1001. We can clip or cut or extract one portion of this DEM later. But I want to show you something very interesting that happened here. We need to provide the projection. We want the Z projection, which is the, the information of the height. Um, our cell height will put average and I will interpolate scalar fields in case we have these gaps. When we have huge buildings, um, you don't have information of the ground. So obviously there will be missing information. And for that, we need to MM those far, um, empty cells to be interpolated. When we do that and we upgrade the grid, look, as you can see here, everything is in one color. And you say, what's happening? If we click on mesh, we will generate a mesh here and then we'll be able to analyze what is going on. So it looks apparently all okay. But when you see in on the edges, there are a lot of points and errors generated because there are missing information here and the, and the algorithm is trying to interpolate. It may not happen to you. It happened with this particular LiDAR data set. Why? I, I, I don't know exactly. I've done a lot of research on how to correct this in Cloud Compare and I found it um, very complicated and it's not a very straightforward process. So why not to avoid that? What I suggest is to generate you can generate again the rasterize and then you can either leave empty but for our purposes on on, on umap we it doesn't work because we need all the information of the ground um, another option is just to interpolate get the the grid with the error but then we can clip it and and in, or extract one portion of that um, a grid in QGIS or RGIS. So it's that's the way I'm, I'm going to do it. It's easier, it's faster. We can also resample input, the input clouds, but I found that it generates the same problem or error. So um, having said that, resampling will do this. You can 
for example, upgrade, I will show you. And once you have these, you can create a cloud. So the, a cloud, an additional cloud will be generated. It's taking a bit. I don't know why it's not generating the cloud. Oh, I, it, it was generated. So here, this is the the cloud that has been generated. And when you go here, the 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 new one, and then you put leave empty the spots. Um, you still find an error. So I, I I found this very annoying. But there, there is an easy way. So just simply don't worry about it. You can generate your DM and then you clip it in QGIS as I'm going to show. So you just put average values, interpolate, upgrade grid. And once you have this, you just have to click on this export as a GeoTIFF, the heights, obviously. And then we're going to call this. Uh, it should be DM, but it's better call it ground because we're going to change these names later because we're going to do corrections and clips, etc. So let's put the name ground. That's it. Um, um, if we go to QGIS to our data um, and then we go to our information, um, where it is, let's go to the folder. Um, we have the UMEF folder. Uh, generate a special data. So we go to the here. Um, you will see we have uh, ground TIFF. That's the error that we, we we found. So we don't need to worry about that about that right now. We just remove this and keep it there simple. So we have generated the first, let's say, DEM. Um, now what we want to is generate a canopy combining these two. So what we do is select these two, we clone, and after cloning, we merge them. Okay. Once we have this merge, we can do the same process. One as a step, Z average, upgrade the grid. We're going to get the same sort of error, but don't worry right now. I, I found this very straightforward and simple process and we call raster we say and for this we're going to put the name ground underscore trees so we know that save okay and now what we're going to do is let's do the same we're going to clone the ground plus the buildings we clone them and we are going to merge them uh, we don't need to put yes here and just simply we generate another one uh, grid, checking that the, all the projection, whatever we want, is correct, and we just put. Uh, look, we can we can create a mesh here. I'll just to show you something. The mesh has been created. As you see, the buildings are there. Everything is just pretty fine, except those edges. It's good you create a mesh to identify where the errors are, and even I try to segment and eliminate these sort of spurious points. Uh, I got the error again. So you may find the same issue. I'm just trying here to to ease your life, not to make it more complicated. So let's rasterize, upgrade, all good. It's looking good, okay. And we save the raster, and then we're gonna put this one ground buildings, okay. We save, okay. And that's all the work we have to do in Cloud compare so far. Okay. So now we go to QGIS. In QGIS, we have all the information. Just be sure that we um, refresh our browser. So here we have ground, ground and buildings, and trees. As you can see, these spurious points are creating the problem. So what I did is uh, basically we got here a lot of information um, and we just want one portion of this whole tile. So now I, I created a grid or a, a, a square, or what I will say is in fact um, a polygon um, that I will show you here. It's, it's very easy and straightforward to do it. So in the processing toolbox, if you don't have your toolbox on, you have to put through processing toolbox. You just put grid. Um, and there is one option called create grid. 
And this grid um, should be rectangle or polygon, and it should have the extent that we want, any extent that you want. It could be 300 meters, okay? Oh, sorry, the extent refers to the, to the length, to, from where to where it should be created. So we can use one of those DEMs um, to create it. But here it comes um, an, an, an alert, which is, says unknown CRS, or, or in fact, there is not a projection assigned. So it's really important you assign the projection. In this case, Canberra is in the GDA 94 MGA zone 55, could be the GDA 22, that's okay. And we were gonna, um, this coordinate reference system should match all the three. Okay, so after having done that, we create our grid with polygon rectangles. We can be diamonds, hexagons, whatever, but um, I think the rectangle will work well um, for most of the cases. The extent will be the ground. And then we put the, de the distance, it could be 300 by 500 or, three, or 500 by 500, whatever you prefer. I will just do this 300 by 300. Um, horizontal overlay, we don't, we don't need that. And we define the projection and then we define where to save it. So we can save this here and we call it grid underscore 300 meters. We save that and then we add the output to to the to the to them um, 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 layers screen. Okay, so this is our uh, grid. Um, we can change the styling here or change the styling here. Uh, create a different opacity. Um, now, I just want to have one of these grids, so I will choose the layer, toggle the addition. And then I will select all the tiles that I don't want. Makes sense. And then just save that. And then so I have only one tile. So the process now will be just to, we have to clip this. Okay. Um, we save, we finish the editions, and then we go to raster. We go to um, clip raster by extent. And then we choose the ground, and then I will choose the extent. In this case, will be my grid. Um, we can override the projection. This I recommend you. So because we already set up the the projection for this tile, otherwise you set up the projection later. Um, no data value as not set. I want to keep it as no data, and then we'll save the file to a specific place. In this case, we can call it DEM clip sounds good okay um tiff that's it um we save and then we run it so when we close as you can see now the dm is properly done okay dm clip is there beautiful for you that's it um you have now the ground and the trees the same process we go raster, extraction, clay by extent, and then we choose ground and trees. The extent will be the grid. We override the projection and we save this. And I want to save it as ground and trees clip, and I will explain you why. This is still not a canopy DSM because the canopy DSM isn't. Um, here are absolute values of height but I want relative values. And I will explain you when it is ready. We save this, we run it. So then we have our um, ground and trees. Now, if you see here the, with the information tool, you choose here, you have the, uh, the, the height. The height here is 561 meters above sea level. If you click here, this point is 569. That, that means there are absolute values of 170, 570. So the difference is nearly 10 meters, it's obvious, but here we have the absolute value. So what we really need is to have for the canopy DSM, what we really need to have is a relative value, relative or um, a normalized canopy DSM, to put it in simple words. So how we achieve that? By using raster calculator. Okay, but before doing that, I just want to be sure that my tile, 
is 300 by 300, the width and the height. It's a float 64 and it's a geotiff. And the other one, which is my DM, is also 300 by 300 flow 64 and geotiff. Okay. Having said that, we can go to raster and raster calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the ground trees clip from the DM clip. And this will give me the relative value of the height of the trees that is going to be useful for the calculations in UMAP. Okay, as uh, a geotiff, my output layer, and then is when I can choose the proper name for this. I will call it canopy DSM clip to understand that this came from the cliff. That tiff save, and we run it. So we run that. What we got here is is a band between minus zero point fourteen. Um, this may be an, a slight error in some points, but it's not dra uh, dramatic. If it will be minus one, I will I will check which points were creating a, a problem. Um, here you see uh, uh, where sort of pyram pyramids. Um, that may happen because there are a lot of spurious points here. So what I will suggest is go to your cloud compare and and clean a little bit the points in those areas because something is creating the problem. Okay. So see, when I inspect this point, the point is telling me zero all the ground, correct? Zero, zero, zero. And then the height of, sorry, the height of the tree is 10 meters. So now that is what we need for UMET, for Solvic particular as one of the tools or processor. So we have already our canopy DSM ready there. So we have the canopy, we can, remove this not to confuse we have the dem we have the canopy um, we can create a symbology here that help us to um, see um, the greens and remove this sort of opacity here so you can see here the trees and you see the these triangular elements here that are our spurious um, um, points and that happened because in cloud compare if you turn on this um, some of these um, buildings are pitch roofs and because of that the pitch roofs create a lot of um, problems with the, when the trees are closed so many of these points were misclassified as trees so you just have to delete those points that are here in the middle um, not very visible but they are there somewhere in the middle okay so that's creating the problem but it can be solved if you want okay so we have the canopy DSM, we have the DN, now we have to generate the DSM, which is the digital surface model. Okay, similar process. We ground our grounds and buildings, right? And our grid. And we go to raster calculator, uh, sorry, no raster calculator, raster extraction and clip. We, the ground and buildings will be clipped based on the grid. We override the output. And then we generate the, where are you, where are you? Um, here, we are going to call this DSM, save. Um, I prefer to call it DSM clip, just to keep consistency. We run, we close that. So what we have here now is, the DSM that we need for the estimation. Correct, that's beautiful, that yeah, makes sense. So we have our, let me organize this, our canopy DSM, our DEM, that should be below this, and our DSM, all the three. And with this information is what we're gonna do all the process, the pre-process uh, work to calculate urban geometry, like for example, SCABU factors. We, um, I already showed that before in a previous video, and I will show you later. But uh, the important thing here is just the data that you need for the Solvig. So if the Solvig, you are gonna need this SCABU factor. We already have the building and ground DSM. 
which is here. We already have the canopy and we just need to generate the wall and height and scavy factors based on the DSMs. And so we have the data. This is just a very straightforward process and you can see the errors on, the, on those sort of corners have been resolved. Just to be sure the height and the width are exactly the same. Now, what happens if you don't have the LiDAR and you only have the DEM? So this, what happened is we have here a DEM already downloaded. And we need to um, project it to the same projection system. Um, as you can see, it's just basically the same. It's the same. But um, this has been already downloaded from Elvis Geoscience, or you may get this. So then you don't have LiDAR, you don't have points. So um, for the buildings, it's a bit complicated. How do you generate buildings here? So um, the best way to generate buildings is by using one of the UMET processors called um, preprocessors called DSM generator. But for that, first we need to clip this. So we're going to do the same process raster, extraction, clip. And <clears throat> we're going to select that. We will use the grid. We will override the output and we will save this. And we will call it DEM2 clip. Correct, just to differentiate from the previous one. We save, we run, we close. So we don't need this anymore, which is original. And then we have the DM. So you see the DM clip two matches relatively similar because obviously the methods of calculation are slightly different, but they are kind of similar. And what we need is also information of the buildings. So I have here it's already buildings created. Um, these are just polygons. So how you create these polygons? Uh, you just go to layer, create layer, create new shape layer, and then you put the name buildings. You choose the geometry to polygon. Um, you choose the projection. Uh, and then you can create um, one field called building, uh, building, building height. And this will be a decimal number with a precision of, you don't need too much precision, it can be two or can be one, okay? And you just add this field, you just save the location. Obviously you need to select where to save the, in your, in your windows, um, in your folders and that's it, you create okay and this will be added. And then I digitize this building. So I digitize using the, the tool here you just create a tool, um, editing tool, and then you start creating some, adding a polygon. And if you want to add here a poly, let's imagine you want to add here a polygon of a new building that it doesn't exist. And it will be a new urban generate, uh, um, urban redevelopment. And you want to simulate with Solvig the effect of this new building. So we add it here. Uh, we put the ID, I think I have 21 buildings, so I will put 22 and the height 50. So let's open the attribute table. We have 21, yet yeah, 22 and 50 meters. So that will be a huge new building. And we save. Um, we stopped editing. So now we have the buildings, we have the DEM. So we use the UMEP preprocess, the processor tool. Which is this very simple go uh, sorry preprocessor spatial data DSM generator. So we choose our DM in this case will be the clip two. It could be the other one DM. I will do it to see that the result is very similar. Um, our polygons will be the buildings we just created and digitized, and we're going to use the building height. You can also use OpenStreetMap and choose the building level height approximate approximate building level height and then save it. But this is not quite accurate, but if you want to be more accurate, then you can use this method. Building height, extend from layer, and then you um, choose the extent of the same DEM you are using, and you match the raster resolution. You save this. So we're going to save it in 
here and we will call it DSM2. DSM2, to make it simple, and put save and then we run. Okay, successfully created. So what we've got here is, uh, as you can see, a DSM with this new building here that is was not in the original DSM. You see? Now, notice the difference. It's really important here. In the, this method, what you're doing is you're generating the buildings, but because the polygon is dictating the elevation of that pixel, it's kind of overriding the, the pixel value. So what you get here is 578, 560, the 18 meters difference. Then it's respected the rest of the height. But here you're getting the, the basically is an addition. It's a mathematical, it's like a raster calculator. And it's simply adding the value of the height um, and adding that value to the existing pixel height. And then you get the, the, the DSM. Here is 612, before was not like that. So right, it, it was 600, um, 562. So if you roughly we do 562 and we add 50 meters, that's your 612 meters. So it makes sense, um, they are there. So pros and cons. So if you have a DSM here with all sort of information, um, the question is um, from derived from LiDAR will be very precise, more accurate because you are really having the, the, the the actual height of each pixel. Rather, in this method, you will have a, uh, it's assuming a flat roof, and then we'll add this to the DSM. Now, how it can be useful, this tool, if you want to create a scenarios, and we will do a special video on a scenario modeling in Solvig in future, so you don't need to worry about it, but you can create a scenarios. So these are the two methods. Um, let's do it now, for example, with the existing DEM we had before. The DEM is this previous DEM derived from LiDAR. Um, it works in a similar way. We just have to go to UMEP, DSM, and choose the origin. The, this is the DEM from the LiDAR, the polygons, the height, the extent from the DEM from the LiDAR the resolution, and then we're going to call this DSM2B. Okay. We run, the operation is successful, and what we get here is pretty much the same result. Um, 561, 178 is 18 meters different. So either you, or if you already have the DEM ready for you, you can add this. Um, use the DSM. If you don't have the buildings, this is an option. Okay, um, but if otherwise, it's the, the best and most accurate way to generate all the data you need, your canopy DSM, your DSMs, and your DMs, um, it's better if you derive all of this from LiDAR. Um, you can visualize this even in your using the QGIS through 3 GS exported, which is a plugin. You just need to go to plugins and add it and then show um, our DEM will be perhaps the, I have so many now, this one's there. So you can see the visualization or you can use the canopy as well. Um, this looks interesting. This looks better. Okay, so this is where you get the canopy because it's, absolute, it's the relative value. So if you go for DSM, then you have your building, very peculiar, right? Um, and you can uh, have your polygons on or not, whatever. But you can visualize a little bit in 3D, this DEM that, and DSMs you generated to make sure that everything makes sense. Um, this is uh, basically the tutorial of today. In the next video, I will just focus on um, how to generate um, uh, meteorological data. And with that information, we can run our own uh, Solveig model 
or any other model in UMIP. So I will teach you how to generate your own meteorological data um, and have everything ready for whenever you want to uh, run Solvig or any other model in UMIP. So stay tuned and see you very soon. Bye-bye.